Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Power Core Productions and Podcastings, where in today's video we are going to be continuing Neon Genesis Evangelion Redemption Book 1 Part 4, What If Shinji Went Back in Time. As always, if you are a fan of the channel or if you're new, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcasting that has to come out now and in the future. Where we last left off with our series, Shinji learns that the more things change, the more they stay the same. His effects by going back in time have set, of course, a new chain of events in his own history. The angels are not attacking at the times he thought they were, as well as new characters that he never would have met before suddenly start to make their appearance. But what does this mean for Shinji and for the future of humanity as a whole? Will he be able to overcome these new changes that are before him? And how will he handle the news of learning that his very life may be extinguishable at any moment? For all this and more, stay tuned as we now continue. Neon Genesis Evangelion Redemption, Book 1, Part 4, What If Shinji Went Back in Time? As always, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Shinji was left speechless for a moment, not sure if he could actually believe the words that had just been spoken to him. As he sat in his room alone, with only the silhouette of Lilith, the angel standing before him. There was so much that was on his mind. He was dying? How was that even possible? He didn't feel like he was dying, and in fact, he felt more invigorated. He felt more powerful than he had ever been in his entire life. Sure, the fights with the angels were difficult, not that they were ever going to be easy to begin with, and for one thing, there was something that Shinji was quite aware of, but on the other hand, he didn't think that it would possibly be that hard, or rather, that his body would be affected in such a way. However, he would heed the warning of Lilith very closely. Shinji Akari, you must understand the process that was used to send you back to this time, it is not one that is as simple as plucking a being from one existence and putting them in another. But to put it in terms that would be easiest for you to understand, imagine yourself as a file. I basically took a file of you from your old world and I essentially uploaded you into this one. However, the process of your body becoming 100% complete into this world, well, it did not fully complete the moment you arrived. It's a process that has taken some time. Although granted, I didn't think that things would change this much. This much? So you mean you knew that changes were going to happen? But of course... I wasn't entirely sure of how everything would play out myself, but from what I was able to do for you, your body gives off a strong signature, like that of an angel. Albeit your human DNA for the most part keeps it suppressed, at least from those who might suspect you. You mean my father and nerve. Precisely. Although I imagine that they will become more and more curious as time goes on, the closer we get to the eventual deadline. The... the deadline? Shinji, your body, for the most part, is at 40% completion. However, I must warn you, if you push yourself in the Evangelion past 100% three more times, before the completion, your body will break down beyond repair. Your soul will reach a point where you will no longer be able to exist in this world. 
and because you have already journeyed back so far, you will not be able to return back to the world in which you came. You will simply fade from existence into where even I do not know. Shinji wasn't sure of what to say in that moment. He was truly in the ultimate of predicaments. His body was at a point where he could not fight at 100%, roughly speaking. Lilith gave him an estimate of how much time he would have. About seven months. Shinji had to survive for the next seven months without using his full power, knowing that the angels, who were aware of who and what he truly was, were going to come at him non-stop. And to make matters worse, with things in this timeline happening at different points and intervals, with some events that had long since passed and for Shinji they still hadn't taken place, there was no telling when a new threat or enemy would arise, and Shinji had to survive for the next seven months. Seven months of trying to lead a team of Evangelion pilots. Seven months of trying to avoid detection from his father and those at Nerve. Seven months, at the very least, to try to hold off whatever Sele's ultimate plans might be. For seven months, Shinji would have to fight off enemies from every side, knowing that if he went all out three times more, on the third, he would inevitably die. But almost to add insult to injury, he won't get a second do-over. His body will be too far destroyed to exist in the world he was sent back to. And he will not be able to join the world in which he left behind. But then Shinji thought about it for a moment. What is life without sacrifice? He had gotten this far and everything had worked out well. In the end, there was only but so much that he could do. But for what he could do, he knew that he would do it to the best of his abilities. Even if it meant that he wasn't going to last for too much longer. That was fine with him. The only thing he cared about was making sure that this world had a chance. That it had a hope. And he would be that hope. He thanked Lilith for the warning. And he promised he would do what he could to survive until then. The more things changed, the more that they stood the same. Eventually, the school would be given its field trip and, just as Shinji knew, all the Ava pilots were not going to be allowed to attend. They would be staying back in the city on standby. Of course, Asuka was bummed out about this. Toji and Kinsuke, who Shinji remembered had glowed in his face about not being able to go in the original timeline, now they were sad and miserable. While Shinji didn't like to see his friends that way, there was a bit of catharsism to it all. The idea that the two of them had wanted to become Ava pilots, and now they see what it cost them. Even Mari was a bit bummed, as even she wanted to enjoy some relaxation, and Ray was confused at everyone's disappointment. However, Shinji knew that this was coming. That's why he made the arrangements for the Ava pilots to be paid well. Each pilot made 2 million yen a month. For you all, you may think that that's a lot of money. And that there's no way that, that Nerve could afford such a payroll. But actually you'd be surprised. When it came to fighting the angels, there was no expense that wouldn't be paid in order to achieve that goal. Because of this, Nerve had a rather large supply of money. So much money that even if they paid each pilot up to 10 million a month, it still wouldn't put a dent in their funds. And thankfully, Shinji had done this so that at least when it was all said and done, when the fighting was over, 
They would have something they could fall back on. Something that they could use to take care of themselves. Not knowing what this world might have for them when this war with the angels finally came to an end. Of course, the students would, for the most part, just hang out at Nerve. After all, they did have their own swimming pool, and they were able to enjoy that. And for Shinji, he got a chance to see something he hadn't seen in a while. That was Asuka in her new swimsuit. Of course, in the original, he didn't really care too much about it. But this time, he chose to appreciate the little things. Just as before, Nerve would eventually discover the eighth angel, an unborn angel that crystallized inside of a volcano on an island. As such, Nerve would be dispatched immediately in order to retrieve this angel and bring it back for study. However, they would be playing a very dangerous game. If the angel were to prematurely hatch for any reason, it would need to be put down immediately. Whereas, if it roll out to roam, it may result in the end of mankind. As for who would be going and who would be staying, Toji, as well as Marie, would both be staying back at Nerve headquarters on the mainland, primarily due to the fact that Ava Units 4 and Ava Unit 5 still hadn't arrived, and on top of that, it was also a point of strategy. Gendo was very aware that in the worst case scenario, he might lose a lot of pilots on this mission. Having two stay back when their units hadn't even arrived would make the most sense. No point sending quality pilots to an area where they wouldn't be needed, and to a place where they might die. But for Shinji, he thought about it in a more darker sense. The bodies under Nerve. Even if Rei were to lose her life here, he knew that his father in all likelihood would just activate another clone, essentially giving him three more pilots to work with, and with that, business would pretty much go on as usual, assuming that they didn't find any more along the way. But for now, their main focus was retrieving this angel at all costs. Of course, there was a bit of tension in the room. Asuka still wanted to prove herself. She still had her pride, but it wasn't the same as before. After that stern warning that Shinji had given her, she didn't really feel all that confident. She didn't really want to stand out, but at the same time she knew that she did. As the operation was put into order, Misato would divide them into teams. A diving team as well as a standby team. To no one's surprise, Shinji and Asuka would be the diving team, their Avas being equipped with special lava resistant material to allow them to dive under the deepest and darkest parts of the magma to retrieve the angel and bring it out. While Kinsuke and Rei would be in Ava Unit 0 and Ava Unit 6. The two would be stationed at the top of the volcano with their sniper rifles at the ready. If the angel were to escape and if it were to get past both Shinji and Asuka, they were ordered to shoot it down by any means. And in the event that that didn't work, well, the world governments were not going to let another situation like Second Impact happen, meaning they were on standby also, but they were not here to help. If anything went wrong, they had been given specific orders to destroy that island to kingdom come. Meaning that everyone there was pretty much going to get killed if things went south. With everyone knowing their roles, the operation would be underway. As both Shinji and Asuka would dive under the magma. As the two descended together, there would be a private line open between the two's Avas allowing them to speak to one another without need for others listening in and giving Asuka a chance to avoid any further embarrassment. 
So, Shinji, I take it nothing seems to bother you. Hmm? And what makes you think that? I don't know. We're just diving into a volcano, our lives potentially on the line. I've noticed it for a while now, but it's like nothing seems to phase you at all. Almost like you're just used to it by now. Of course, he couldn't deny that. After all, she was right. He was more used to it than anyone else could ever know, as this was something that he had lived through. But at the same time, it wasn't that simple either. You don't get used to pain. You don't get used to loss. And the day that you do, that's honestly the day that you're probably not even human anymore. For Shinji to be in this situation, to be given this second chance, it meant more to him than anything that anyone could ever know. Shinji thought about it for a moment before he responded. It's not as easy as you think, Asuka. I care just as much as anyone else. I know it might seem like I don't, and maybe it's just a front that I try to put up to keep others out, but in the end of the day, I'm only human. I feel pain just as much as you do, as much as anyone else does. And I know that in the end, I simply can't afford to fail. Because if I fail, it's not just my life that's on the line. It's all of you. I was assigned captain, and it's a role that I have to take seriously. Knowing that all of you are under my command potentially, I have to lead by example. Yeah, I'm afraid. I'm not going to sit here and act like everything is easy for me. It's not even close. I wake up some days in a painful sweat. Sometimes I loathe closing my eyes because I don't know if I'm ever going to awaken again. You never know what can happen. And the only thing that matters now is that we finish this mission and that we survive together. Asuka was surprised by his words and how deep they were. The two of them would stand firm. Shinji wanted the mission to be a success. He thought it would be, but ultimately he knew it wasn't. Almost as if verbatim, the eighth angel, Sun Da Fun, would awaken, attempting to break free from its crystallized state. Shinji and Asuka would have no choice but to battle it under the magma below eventually using the extra coolant tanks attached to their Evangelions to sub-freeze and destroy it, before eventually escaping and making their way to the surface. Of course, it would have been touch and go for a moment, but Shinji was prepared, and living up to his words, he promised that they would not lose a comrade. While Masato couldn't allow them a vacation, she could at least take them out somewhere nice. They decided they would go to the hot springs. After picking up Marie and Toji, all of the members of the team would have themselves treated. Of course, for the boys, they talked about boy things for the most part, but there was also this sense of, well, inadequacy. For Toji, he couldn't wait till his Evangelion showed up. He wanted to be out there on the front lines fighting with both Kintsuke and with Shinji. He wanted to be there for his friends. And the weight was really starting to get to him. And then there was Mari. Of course, she didn't mind being on the sidelines. After all, when it came to battle and glory, she didn't really fight for those things. Although what she did fight for, she really wouldn't know herself. She wasn't sure of why she did what she did or why she was the way that she was. It was just the way that she had lived her life. Honestly, outside of Asuka, she didn't have many, if any, real or genuine friends. And she wasn't the type of person that wanted the spotlight for herself. 
No, Marie was always content with being a background player. She just liked to observe things, no matter what they might be, just to see what could happen. That was just the way that she was, the way that she had always been. And then there was Ray. As she was bonding with the girls herself, she couldn't help but feel this overwhelming sense of warmth. She wasn't sure of why, but as she spent more time with her team, she grew closer to them. She wanted to be around them. It made her feel something. For Shinji, though, as the boys would all rest together in the hot spring, they knew all too well that these times, they were fleeting. And there would be more trouble ship that would brew on the horizon. For Shinji, the one thing that he hated was the heat. Sure, he had been through many things in his life that made him uncomfortable, but somehow, the heat waves of Tokyo 3 in the dead of summer, that was something that he absolutely couldn't stand. And he was glad to know that he wasn't the only one that felt that way, as the other pilots of Evangelion also shared his sentiment. Even Rey, who was normally rather cool and reserved, even she showed signs of fatigue and annoyance. It was in the middle of a heat wave, and well, now that class had been over, they were making their way back to headquarters. Today was easy enough. Many were casually making their way to the office. No one was in any real need or hurry. But of course, it was on a day like today, one that Shinji should be very familiar with, that things didn't quite go as planned. For one, Tokyo 3 lost power. Losing power in the heat wave, Shinji would think. It meant that the ninth angel wasn't too far away. Of course, Shinji was the most annoyed out of everyone, but for good reason. Sometimes it sucked being the only one that knew anything. It wasn't like being the smartest person in a room. No, it was the sheer annoyance of knowing that there would be a tedious amount of work that came with all of your efforts. And even more so, he had to deal with the various contingencies all around him. He couldn't fight at full power. In fact, he had been warned that if he did so three more times, then on the third time, he was going to die. Of course, this only applied for the next seven months, but even still, waiting a whole seven months never knowing what may or may not happen, well, it was like playing Russian roulette with your life. And then there was the matter of his father. Shinji's father was being a lot different. Of course, he still tried to give off his cold and rather unwicuth sort of demeanor. And sure, it worked in scaring a few of the other pilots, but not Shinji. And Shinji could tell that his father was very much affected by this. It bought him satisfaction in a way. The idea that his father was so unnerved that he couldn't control his own son. Not that Shinji was being defiant. No, he followed his orders as given. But Shinji never gave Gendo the satisfaction. Not once. When Gendo spoke to his son, he never felt like he was always in control. And that was something that Gendo was slowly starting to feel the effects of. Gendo always prided himself on being that ominous figure of being that one ultimate authority. He always prided himself on being ahead of the game, never allowing his opponents to see his next move. But with Shinji, 
It was like the boy could read them like a book. They hadn't even known each other for that long, as Shinji had gone off to live on his own. But how had he changed so much? From all the reports that he had heard, his son was a whiny little crybaby who couldn't think or do anything for himself. But this boy that was before him, he was nothing like how it had been described at all. The boy had a mind of his own. He was able to think. He was able to be rational. And even more so, he was able to negotiate. He was able to turn things on his head. Not to Sh Gendo's liking. All the same, things played out at Nerve much as Shinji would have expected to. The power went out and that meant everything would have to be done auxiliary by hand until the system could be up and running. Just as Shinji predicted, the ninth angel would make its presence known. A spider-like angel that could leak out a rather dangerous acid. Of course, Shinji didn't feel like going through the ringers of wasting time, so he would take the lead as captain and would assure everyone that he would find them where they needed to go. Of course, no one questioned it since Shinji was their captain. It was obvious that if anyone would know what to do in this situation, it would be him. Of course, there was also the dealing of Misato as she was stuck in an elevator with Kaji, and Shinji figured he might as well help them get out. He would pretend as though he could hear something in the distance. He would then order for both Toji as well as Marie to go and investigate to see if anyone had been trapped in the elevators and to help them out. He figured since they didn't have their Avas yet, they would be most suited in rescue. Of course, Toji didn't like it at all, and neither did Marie, but in the end of the day, they didn't have Evangelions, so rather than all of them trying to crouch and make their way to the same port, why not use those who could help others and allow them to do so? Before long, Shinji would arrive, along with Kensuke, Rei, and Asuka, the four pilots crawling through many air vents and going down many corridors before eventually finding where they needed to go. As for Marie and Toji, they would eventually make their way to the elevator and with Toji using his athletic strength, he would help pry the door open. As they did so, the two children got a little bit more than they wanted to see. Misato, trying to escape, was on Kaji's shoulders and she was wearing her signature skirt, so when the two toppled over, well, Kaji got a good view of what was under the hood, and Misato was all but embarrassed. Toji, well, he shyly looked away, a little jealous, but still, he kind of knew where things were going anyway, and Marie, well, she had a rather wicked smirk on her face. She was never one to miss up an opportunity to tease, as she gave Misato a little elbow rub. I see you there, Commander, trying to get a little frisque with the Kaje. Misato simply shook her head in annoyance. She couldn't believe this. Kaji simply smiled at it all. Your children are something else, Misato. Really, you're an amazing mother. Now Misato wished she could just die. But there was no time for that. Misato... Toji, Marie, and Kaji close behind would make their way to where Gendo and Ritsuko were. Thankfully, they had a team on standby that could get the Avas up and running manually. They had the means of using diesel power that would allow them to function even without the use of electricity. It was a bit more daunting and it required a bit more work, but it was what needed to be done. And just like that, Ava Unit Zero... Ava Unit 1, Ava Unit 2, and Ava Unit 6 would be deployed. The four Avas moving through the larger bunker of Nerve as they had to pry the doors open manually since there was no electric locks to help free them. And just as Shinji had expected, the Angel was trying to make its way in. 
He could hear the voice of the angel telepathically as it spoke, calling out for its one true host, calling out for Adam. Shinji knew full and well what it wanted, and the angel was very much aware of what Shinji truly was. Thankfully, no one else was privy to the conversation between Shinji and the angel, all be except for Shinji's mother, the soul of Ava Unit 1. They had had their conversation about what Shinji had learnt from Lilith, and to say that Shinji's mother was more than concerned would be an understatement. Of course, she trusted her son greatly. She didn't doubt his abilities. He had shown what he was capable of. But still, any parent would worry for their child. And even more so, with the idea of never knowing when a battle might be their last. But for now, Shinji remained focused on what he could do. And right now, the only thing that they had to do was survive this fight. His mother promised that she would support him in any way that he could. Although she did implore with him not to use up his three strikes, at least until the seven months had passed. Shinji promised that he would do his best not to use them. As they entered into battle as the angel was leaking its corrosive acid within Nerve itself, burning away at the Evangelions, Shinji questioned if he could have just enough power to push it back. Of course he wasn't going to be alone in the endeavor, as Asuka wanted to help, with or without his permission. As such, they would have to come up with the best plan that they could use. That being with both Shinji and Asuka using their AT fields. Thankfully, of all of the pilots, Asuka was the one that was closest to Shinji in terms of overall sync ratio and in power and skill. Everyone was impressive in their own right, but Asuka definitely showed why she was in a class of her own. And why she and she alone were capable of hanging with Shinji. As such... The two would open their AT fields together, using their combined strength to push the angel back, giving both Kintsuke and Rei a long enough time to collect themselves and take the shots necessary, filling up the angel full of holes before finally blasting and destroying it. For everyone at Nerve, the victory had been won. They had overcome the odds, and they had done what they had needed to do to survive this battle. But even still, there were those who could see the bigger picture in the grand scheme of things. To the untrained eye, it would have seemed as though this whole attack was orchestrated by the angel, and that they had just managed to overcome it in victory. However, Gendo knew the truth. In the end, the ones who had sabotaged Nerve's security system, as well as their power source, were those of a more human kind. This was an attempt to see how Nerve handled itself under this particular circumstance, to see how they could be combated against if they were to experience a true blackout. Thankfully, they had been able to hold their own, but Gendo could tell fully that their enemies were out and about. Of course, there was another moment that would change Shinji's life forever. That being the fact that he would be privy to be one of the few people to meet with Sele. Meeting with the council, Shinji, hiding his expressions under his glasses, tried his best to hold back the anger and the rage that he felt. He could feel the power seeping from him as he stood before these men. The men that were responsible for the destruction of his world, of the pain that was caused in the lives that had been taken away. For Shinji, he debated whether or not if he should do it, if he should bring Ava Unit 1 with him right now and destroy everyone here. But of course he knew better than to do that. But all the same, Shinji was seething. It took everything to hold himself before both he and Gendo would leave. Sele had been keeping a close eye on Shinji and to say that they were impressed, well that would be the biggest understatement of the decade. Shinji was a natural. The boy could push his sync ratio 
to incredible levels. Every day that went by, he was growing to become more and more of the perfect specimen. The one that would make their dreams come true of human instrumentality. But then finally, there was Gino himself. As he laid, he looked up to the ceiling. He thought of his wife in that moment before thinking of his son as well. And of thinking of the man that his son was becoming day by day. His son had a strength that he couldn't possibly fathom. And even more so, he wondered if he had such strength. If he did, then maybe things wouldn't have gotten to this point. But even if they were, he knew that he would have to try to see things through till the end. Knowing that when he did so, it would put him on a collision course with his own son. And in the battle of their ideologies, as to who was right and to who was wrong. Well, that was something that Gendo himself were not sure if he were ready to face. But as for Shinji, he knew now that he were in the next stage of his plans. Defeating Sele, stopping human instrumentality, and defeating the angels. That was what he had to do, but he had to hold out. He couldn't use his full power for another seven months. If he did so, it would result in his death. But now, it was a waiting game. From Sele, to his father, to the angels themselves. Shinji was going to have a long road ahead of him if he was going to have to out-survive and outwork them all till the finish. But in the end, Shinji knew that he was ready. Because whether he liked it or not, from this point forward, there was no going back. This concludes... Neon Genesis Evangelion Redemption, Book 1, Part 4, What If Shinji Went Back in Time. As always, if you enjoyed today's video and everything else that we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcasting that has to come out now and in the future. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video as we continue Naruto Polaris, What If Hanabi Hyuga Was Born First, Part 7. But anyway, that's going to do it for the end of today's video. I'm Javon Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcastings. Signing off, and I'll see you next time.